What's up investors, my name is Artem Dikarev and in a couple of minutes you will know what's the difference between stocks and bonds. I will first give a professional definition and then I'll explain it as easy as I can with examples. And if you want to learn personal finances and investing by watching such short videos, please consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video to show the support for the young creator. Many more videos are coming. Thank you so much and let's get straight to the point. Alright, so the difference between the stocks and bonds is the way your money is used and the way such investments generate profit. Profit. And if you're not sure what stocks or bonds mean individually, feel free to watch my previous videos. And here is an example. In order to show the differences in a better visual way, let's use this table on this whiteboard. So the first of all is the type of the security. Stocks are equity, meaning that every time your profit can be different. While bonds are fixed income instruments, meaning that your returns are fixed and somewhat guaranteed. Next is the way these investments bring you money. You can profit from investing in stocks by receiving dividends or realizing capital gains. And capital gain is simply when you sell a stock for a higher price than you bought it for. And in case of bonds, you receive coupon payments which are distributed monthly, quarterly or annually. Now are the risks. Generally speaking, stocks are riskier than bonds. Even the best of the blue chip stocks are considered to be riskier than high quality bonds. But less risks mean lower potential returns. For this reason, the average annual return of the bond market since 1929 is around 6%. And the average return of the stock market since the same date is around 10%. Next, we have the way your money is used or simply saying the purpose of such investments. If you invest in stocks, you become the owner of a small part of a company. You can participate in shareholders meetings, vote, appoint board of directors and even claim a part of the earnings. And bondholders simply lend their money to a government or a company for them to use. And in return, companies and governments make coupon payments to you. Now let's talk about investing strategies. If you're planning to invest for the long term, investing in stocks might be more suitable for you, especially if you can tolerate a little bit more risk. The reason for this is because you have enough time in your investment journey in case something goes wrong. But if you're close to retirement or if your investment horizons are short, you are better off investing in bonds. The returns will be most likely lower, but at least they're more or less guaranteed, so you can feel confident about the safety of your principal. Next, we have the performance. And generally speaking, it is inverse. Which means that whenever the stock market is crashing, investors seek for a safe harbor in the bond market. And the opposite is true. When the stock market is feeling optimistic and bearish, investors switch back from bonds to stocks. Another reason for inverse performance is the central bank's interest rates. If the rate goes up, people start buying more bonds and less shares. But when interest rates go down, investors seek for more profitable securities on the stock market. Now a quick word about the benefits. Stockholders can participate in shareholders meetings, vote and even appoint the board of directors. But if a company goes bankrupt and sells its assets in order to repay its investors, the bondholders are the priority to receive such payments. And finally, this is what influences the value of stocks and bonds. If a company is performing good has strong financials and perspectives, most likely such company will grow in the future. And shares of a company will most likely grow along with it. And in order for bonds value to change, interest rates must be adjusted or a bonds rating might be changed. Usually if the interest rates go up, existing bonds lose its value. Because newly issued bonds have better coupon payments. And if the interest rates go down, then the value of existing bonds will go up for the opposite reasons. Also if a rating agency increases the rating of a corporate bond, the value of such bonds tend to go up. And if the rating goes down, the value simply follows it. So these were the differences between stocks and bonds at least as I see them. And if you still have any questions after watching this video, feel free to leave a comment and I'll personally reply to you. Check my other videos to see if there's anything else you want to learn about personal finances and investing. Thank you all so much for spending this couple of minutes with me. I really hope there was something new that you learned today and it was straight to the point.